of that's lubricating oil, the cracking unit, heavy gas oil, the cracking unit, and then at the bottom there's uh, residual to uh, coker, C-O-K-E-R. Not sure if that's spelled correctly or... Anyway, it's an interesting process though. So at the very top, the most refined, I guess, you have gas. And it doesn't say what kind. It could be jet fuel too, right? Kerosene's in the middle. And then gas, oil, or diesel. Gas oil is probably what I change when the oil gets dirty in my engine. Not sure. The oil refining process, of course, starts with a fractional uh, distillation column, much like the one I just described. And the problem with, with crude oil is that it contains hundreds of different types of hydrocarbons, and they're all mixed together. So we know that you have to separate the different types, right? Otherwise, none of it's going to be useful. And fortunately, that there is an easy way to separate things, and this is what oil refining is all about. So at least we know it's a simple way uh, to do so. Okay. Uh, before I run out of time, I, I want to talk about one final uh, thing, and let's see if I can get this done in five minutes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, right. I talk too much. Okay. Um, octane rating. What what does octane mean? Okay, and can we bust some myths really really quick? Is that okay? Okay, um, octane rating or the number is a standard measure of performance of an engine or aviation fuel. Now, how do I know this? Because I looked it up on Wikipedia. <laughs> Again, the higher the octane number, the more compression the fuel can withstand before detonating or igniting. So I guess in uh, layman's terms, fuel with a higher octane rating uh, is going to be used in high-performance engines that require higher compression ratios. Now, to me, this doesn't make sense. Again, I'm reading this from Wikipedia, and I don't necessarily know more than them, but a higher compression ratio would make the fuel more unstable, and if it's more combustible, then that means that it would ignite prematurely in a high-compression engine, in, in my theory, again, uh, you know, let's see if we can get some comments back uh, <laughs> from my friends who are in the automotive field, because you guys are going to know more about that than me. In contrast, fuels with lower octane numbers, but higher uh, cetane numbers are ideal for diesel engines, right? Okay, so I just mentioned the higher compression engines. Well, diesel is a very high compression engine, but diesel won't run in my gas engine. It won't even burn. So... Higher octane, you would think, would be used in low compression engines. Now, I, again, it takes high compression to burn a hardly flammable substance. I, I love it in movies where a diesel truck explodes to high heaven, <laughs> you know, and then you're trying to like light some trash in the yard. You got a pile of wet branches, and you're you know dousing it with diesel, and you throw a match in there, and it goes out. <laughs> Gas doesn't have that problem. You throw the match, it explodes before the match even gets there because it's actually the fumes evaporating from the liquid gasoline that causes the combustion, right? But if I put diesel, which has to run in a very high compression engine in my car, which is less compression than diesel, it won't burn. I, I did it. Not in this car. But in Oregon, I asked for something that I didn't get at one station and uh i guess the attendant was new and he put 10 gallons of diesel in my car and i fired it up and it started to leave and before it even got off the lot it had cleared the gas lines of what was in the fuel system it started running really rough and then it died and it was a mess getting that cleaned out thankfully they had an automotive shop there and they were able to take care of that for me and i got my gas and was on my way but it took almost nine hours uh, sitting there, mm, I was angry, yes, but I was nice to them, and, well, I was happy that it was getting taken care of, and there was nothing I could do about it, so I actually did show patience that one time, okay, so uh, petrol engines are referred to as gasoline engines, and they rely on an ignition of, you know, fuel and air mixed together, and they're compressed as a mixture, and then ignition causes them to explode. And I've already discussed kind of how that works, the uh, four strokes, okay? Um, 
A high compressibility of fuel matters mainly for petrol engines. Use of gasoline with lower octane numbers may lead to problems of engine knocking. That's according to the octane rating article in Wikipedia. So personally, I think that that if if the engine is knocking, it's very you know low compression. You'd put higher octane fuel in there, might rectify the the issue. But again, I I don't know for sure. So if if you've read how car engines work, if you listened to my the beginning of this podcast, I kind of discussed how the engine works. Uh, then you'll know that almost all, all cars use four-stroke in, uh, gasoline engines. Okay, there there are a couple, one by Jeep, that experimented with a two-stroke engine, and the difference between four-stroke and two-stroke engines will have to be a different episode at a different time. Okay, but uh, one of the strokes is compression stroke, and the engine compresses the cylinder. Now, we know, uh, I'm just going to stay on that one stroke right there, because what we're we're looking at here is basically an engine uh, compresses a cylinder full of air and gas mixed together into a smaller volume. And of course it's ignited by a spark plug. The amount of compression is called the compression ratio. And a typical engine might have a compression ratio of let's say eight to one. Okay. If, if there's eight equal sections in that cylinder and it compresses all eight of them, except for one because it can't the piston can't just slam into the top of the 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 block right into the head um so uh eight to one compression that's pretty standard um high compression engines that they run in like nascar or whatever they might be 18 to one or higher i don't know for sure but um higher compression okay so there is um online i just found at howstuffworks.com that there's an article that discusses or, or shows an image gallery of what this might look like. So uh, maybe you want to check that out at howstuffworks.com. Okay, so let's let's try to bust this myth real quick. In the automotive world, there are many many common myths which are repeated so many times that after a while we kind of I guess start to believe them. We believe that they're facts. They just become facts because everyone talks about it. Unsurprisingly, though, many of these facts have to do <laughs> with gasoline, okay? Whether they be regarding fuel mileage, power possibilities, or, you know, some other aspect of the internal combustion engine, it doesn't matter. Gasoline can be a very confusing topic. It was confusing, is still confusing to me. The only thing not confusing about it is that I can put it in my car, I guess. I don't know. Um, simply put, when you uh, pull into the gas station and are presented with an array of different fuel grades. There was one picture I found that actually had 87 octane, 88 octane, 89, 90, 91, 92. I mean, one oct- octanal difference? <laughs> I, I don't know what that would have mattered. But if it does, then there's a huge difference between 87 and 92, right? So what are these ratings? Uh, when you pull into a gas station, you have this huge array of, of choices in front of you. Uh, that you can put in your car. The number written above each button or nozzle indicates the particular grade octane rating that you're going to get. I always thought that it was interesting that there's going to be some of whatever was pumped last still in the hose. <laughs> you know? So, if you want some free high octane gas, just like get a dollar of gas behind the person that uh, that was ahead of you that was pumping high octane kidding of course in the world of automobiles it's tempting to associate higher numbers with higher quality after all more horsepower and more miles per gallon uh, would be a better thing wouldn't it okay this feeds into our perception that more impressive octane ratings also equal higher performance so my car will go faster and uh, it's kind of a mental thing i guess that the gasoline companies are using this mentally Uh, they don't do anything to dissuade drivers from it Labeling 87 octane gas regular and 91 or 93 is super. Um, I don't see that a whole lot anymore, but I, it used to be. You'd get like super unleaded in an attempt to reinforce this way of thinking. Because after all, super is priced higher than regular, so you're actually just paying a super price instead of a regular price, right? Unfortunately, there. this is where the myth 
of what gasoline companies um, really mean creeps into the picture. Okay, time and again, people will be told that higher octane fuel burns cleaner or more completely and that it'll give them extra power and better fuel mileage than regular octane gasoline because it contains more energy. Okay, I could go on with this, but I only have about four minutes left before I use up the maximum amount of time allotted, and I, I don't want to lose you guys on this, so let me just wrap this up right here. Okay, what does octane do? Many people think that higher octane supercharges combustion in an engine. Okay, if you see high octane ratings for given gasoline, what does that really tell you? The octane rating of gasoline essentially tells you how much air fuel mixture can be compressed before it will spontaneously ignite. Okay, let me leave that as the simple answer there. The octane rating is basically if you were to keep slowly compressing the fuel until it just blows up by itself without a spark, without an ignition source, that that's what the octane rating is. It, it really doesn't matter how clean it burns or how dirty it, it burns. It doesn't make a difference in how fast your car goes or how much power you're going to be putting in, you know, into the vehicle. Now, I'm not trying to dissuade you from purchasing this, but let me also sum up my previous point about the difference between AMPM, Arco gas, let's say, and, and Chevron gas. There really isn't a difference. What we're seeing here, what we're, we're learning, and I guess what I could go on and on about forever and ever is that car engines all work the same. Whether it's a Ford, Chevy, Dodge, some other uh, brand, they all work the same. They have different ways of processing the power that comes from igniting the fuel, but they all have to burn this gas. A hybrid car has an engine that runs and burns gas to create electricity for the batteries and for the compensators, okay? So on and so forth. Anyway, the long and short of this is simply that there is not a difference in gas quality. So wherever you choose to purchase your fuel from, uh, the only thing that's going to affect you is how well maintained the pumps are and how well maintained the tanks are and that's not necessarily better because you're going to chevron or because i might go to shell station or to arco so rather than spend a bunch of money on gas because the gas companies want you to believe it's better maybe we could save some money by going where you feel comfortable but purchasing a lower octane level fuel Unless your car is knocking, then you, you use the fuel that will reduce that from happening until it can get into a mechanic shop and resolve the issue. Because you can't use a chemical solution fix for a mechanical problem. So I'll leave you on that thought right there. Thank you for listening and for your comments and questions. I look forward to uh, spending some time with you guys again uh, the next time. This is Jonathan. You can email me at cjwilliams, the number 4th at aol.com, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.